Good morning. Good morning. You'll need this this morning. Did you happen to notice how many S words were in the texts this morning? The answer should be no. No. No, because you didn't warn us ahead of time that you needed us to watch for S words. But there were all kinds of S words this morning. And as I read the text this week, preparing for the sermon, I thought, you know, there are so many S words. I think I should use every single one of them in the sermon. Yes. Pastor Keith loves it when I do this. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I thought I'd do that. But then as I thought about it, I thought of Alex Trebek. How many of you are Jeopardy fans? Yeah, I know. Um, a wildly famous uh, program that uh, that ran for years and years and years. And then when Alex passed, there's all kinds of people who wanted to take his place. But nobody will ever be Alex, let's face it. I'll never forget watching Jeopardy for the first time and thinking, well, this is a real test of knowledge. And then when he got to sort of double Jeopardy round and the dollars went up, I thought, this is, a, this is an easy way to win a lot of money until you got to some of the categories. And if you look this morning on that line that says sermon, um, it says, I'll take controversial S words for a thousand, Alex. That's what I want to talk about this morning. Because I don't want you to get stuck with the many other sermons that you've heard about the great shepherd. I, I want to give us a, a little bit fuller perspective on this passage in John and kind of an extended version of it, by the way, and then all those others and how they all fit together. So are you ready to do this? By the way, the reason I'm doing it this way is because I'm a shepherd. <laughs> right? So just think of this when we get to Psalm 23 as letting you lie down in green pastures and restore your soul. Because some of you are here this morning, and you're not thinking that the Great Shepherd is hanging out with you too much. Uh, some of you are in real difficulty. For example, in the last few weeks, we had two of our members of our congregation pass away. Um, where was the Shepherd then? A few of you have been in hospital. Where was the Shepherd then? Well, I want to talk to you about that this morning for just a few minutes. And if you're sitting here and you're suffering pain or you're having some difficulty in your heart, in your mind, I want to remind you that the Great Shepherd is here for you today. So you ready? Keep your bulletin handy because we'll be referring to those scripture passages this morning as we always do. Uh, this is our uh, No Series series. Um, <laughs> Time. So today's focus is John chapter 10. Actually, the, the whole passage is verses 1 to 21, which is a beautiful text about our good shepherd, Jesus. So let's look at the S words. Uh, go back to your text this morning. You won't have all the way to 21, but you'll have the first 10. So one of the S words is sheepfold. For most of us, that means home. So this is a sermon about the shepherd who makes sure that we're home. You feel at home this morning? Most of you should in the sanctuary. I hadn't even planned to use that S word, but <laughs> here we are in a place where we feel safe and secure and comfortable and loved and cared for. And as the words of the liturgy kind of waft over us and we say them, some of them are very familiar and others might be new, but there's comfort here. It's wonderful. Um, that's what the sheepfold is. Then the word shepherd. Sometimes that word is translated pasturer or pastor. Shepherd. Then there are sheep. Remember in Handel's Messiah, Oh, we like sheep. And then what are the next words? Have gone astray. No, 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 no. Sheep are wise, intelligent beings. That's not us. Um, then there's strangers. Strangers. And what does that word mean in this passage? 
It means that there's a shepherd who cares for the sheep, but there are other people who are simply called hirelings or strangers. They're people who really don't care for the sheep. They're just there for the coin. Pay me, let me get out of here. Sheep are dumb, I don't care. Now, when you stop and think about it, in the ancient world, those sheep were really the well-being of the community. So you really don't want strangers taking care of your sheep, at least not people who don't care, and people who, when they're under threat, will run away. You want somebody who's going to make sure and save the life of the sheep. And isn't that what we know Jesus for? He's our savior. Well, there are wolves that are always around and sometimes they come and steal and snatch and scatter the sheep. Who would you rather have looking after the sheep? The shepherd or the stranger? The shepherd who's gonna give his life for the sheep or the stranger who's going to run away? I mean, clearly, we want the shepherd because the shepherd is willing to sacrifice. Sacrifice himself for the life of the sheep. And when you think about it this morning, if you're going through a really difficult time, you know that seat right next to you? It's not occupied by your spouse. Another S word I hadn't even planned to use. You go, what? You might imagine the shepherd being right there. And if you look around over your shoulder, you might imagine his arm right around you. So JR, when some of those folks are having difficult times in your chaplaincy ministry, I'll bet you you're really glad that you're not the only one sitting in the car going to meet them, <laughs> that the shepherd is sitting in the passenger seat. The shepherd. So that's what the John passage is about. Now, how do the others fit in? Well, it's, it's really interesting how that all works. Um, because I think Grace really knows something about Jesus, our good shepherd, because we had one of those in our building. That was the great stained glass window that was at first behind the altar. And then when the building was moved, the building got flipped around. And that's the window that you see when you were on West Street looking at the oldest part of the building. Am I right, Elda? Right. There it is. And you know when it's really beautiful? When the church on the inside is dark at night and there's light shining from the outside coming in and you stand there in the rays of the shepherd. That's really something. More than once when we were at that building, I was there later at night with the rays from the streetlights coming in, standing next to that shepherd window, feeling really cared for. And I put myself kind of in the position of that one sheep there on the right, who's kind of looking up, getting some guidance. And sometimes I needed to be the lamb that was up in Jesus' arms. Okay, God, what do we do now? Help! So we all have wonderful notions about shepherds until we think about the flip side, sheep. I already talked about Handel. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to our own way. So let's talk for a minute about sheep. And I'm channeling Ryan Albano here. I have to have an image that gets somewhat close to the donkey. So he now is known for Donkey Sunday and I'll be known for Sheep Sunday. And good luck to you finding other animals that you can put in your sermon. So I love this picture. I, I mean, it's just kind of like, yeah, how are you doing? But I like this one just as well, because sheep are sometimes kind of happy people. Now I've already got Eliana's interest. She's saying, yeah, what's he going to do next? You ready? Here we go. 
sheep we know, like all those people in your high school that you hung out with, or in your college. And then, of course, the one that wanted to be always different. <laughs> or what about sheep in the family, right? Um, which one of you is the one standing in the middle? <laughs> or how about crazy Uncle Larry who shows up on Thanksgiving? What is crazy Uncle Larry hiding? I think it's his due, right? Isn't that a gorgeous, I don't know whether that's a comb over or he just hasn't gotten a haircut for a while. Sheep just hanging out. Uh, sheep like to hang out with people. Actually, this lady is showing this sheep a picture and I think she thinks the sheep is actually interested. <laughs> or how about riding a sheep? Have you ever thought about riding a sheep? Klein, you're a little big to ride a sheep. But that person, like I'm thinking that's probably Michael's age, um, would have got to have a blast out of writing. Or what if you thought about putting curlers in your hair and a sheep's hair? I mean, that's really relating, isn't it? You're probably wondering, when is he going to get rid of all these pictures? How about sheep having fun? You ever thought about how they have fun? Like, look at these. These are Canadian sheep who are mimicking Canada goose as they fly. <laughs> in a V. And guess what? There's the, there's the old sheep who's just kind of saying, oh really, could we please get back to the serious stuff? So you needed that little bit of break because there were a lot of S words at the beginning in the John passage, right? So let's move on for just a moment and see what that beautiful psalm that we all recited together really means in connection with Jesus identifying himself as the great shepherd. Because remember, the psalm was part of Jesus' Bible. So how would he know to connect himself to people? What about the beautiful words of David in Psalm 23 that talk about sheep? Well, it's not so, well, shall we say, well, I won't use that word. Let, let, let's talk about the sheep. At, at first, you look at the text, and they're kind of shallow. They don't know how to take care of themselves. They don't know when to rest. They don't know how to restore themselves. They put themselves in danger by going next to streams that if they were to fall in, their wool would be so saturated that they would not be able to save themselves. They're just not strong enough to do it. They, they don't have the resources. That's why they need the shepherd. Do you always have the resources you need? Oh, come on, admit it. There are days when you're thinking, oh, I really need help here. My faith is a little too shallow for the depth of this challenge. They live in the shadow. You may wonder, what's that about? Well, that's the verse that says, Either I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Sheep are so dependent on the shepherd, they always walk in the shadow of danger. They can always easily be attacked. They can easily fall. All kinds of things can befall sheep. Of course, that's not us in our culture, right? Because we're all strong, we're all capable, we're, yeah, not so much. The shepherd provides security because sheep can't provide security for themselves. Have you ever watched what happens when sheep are threatened? They form in a big circle. And they don't turn outwards to protect everybody in the center, they all turn inward. Now imagine if you were a wolf, this would be perfect. <laughs> Sheep are always concerned about scarcity. That's why they keep their noses right to the ground, because food is the way they live. And do you know what it means when it says, the shepherd prepares the table before the sheep. It means that he goes through the whole pasture 
and picks up the rocks and cuts out the cacti so the sheep who are so concerned about eating don't bump their noses and stick themselves with the hazards that are in the way. I mean, talk about a dependent animal. And safety is a big thing. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. As a matter of fact, let me go back there for just a minute. The, the rod was a club to beat off the wolves and the staff had a crook in it. By the way, who in the church carries a staff? Bishops. They take care of the sheep. The Pope carries a really big staff. He's got a really big job. But this is for safety too. Have you ever seen the picture of the lamb that's fallen over the side of the cliff and the shepherd is reaching down with the crook of the staff trying to grab underneath on the chest of the animal to pull it back up to safety? Sheep, as much as we want to think of them as cute, beautiful animals that supply wonderful clothing for us, are a really good example of who we are. We are really quite needy. And the shepherd is always there. Well, let me go to that next slide because I once wrote an article during COVID and published it on our Facebook page. And my, a friend of mine read it. And what I wrote was all of these things about sheep and shepherds. But at the bottom, I said, sheep are not ever promised a perfect life. And this person, his big objection to God at the moment was, but things happen to God's people. Why doesn't he stop those things from happening? Some of you read that Rabbi Kushner passed away yesterday when bad things happen to good people. In, in that book, many people took comfort because they realized that here is a man that was telling us the truth. We're not all going to escape difficulty and nobody will escape death. But God has always promised to be with us. And yet, when I reminded this person of that, this is what they said. Well, that's not terribly comforting. In other words, he's not going to make sure that my life is perfect. Not going to keep me from all the dangers that are out there. No, that's not the promise of the psalm. The promise of the psalm is that the shepherd will always be there. No matter what you have to endure. So let's look at shepherd related words. He's a supplier. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall never be in want. Other translations say, I don't need anything when I have the shepherd around me. He's the supporter. He's the one who makes me lie down, who makes me rest, who leads me beside still water so I can drink. He's the sustainer of my life. He's the staff wielder to protect me and keep me safe. And he's the scout that makes sure that not only am I safe out in the field, but that I'll make it home forever. So is it any wonder that John 10 says what it does about Jesus, the shepherd? Jesus gets it all from his experience with shepherds in that beautiful song that we just looked at. So, however, sheep are promised and ever abiding, ever loving, always caring, forever faithful shepherd who will live to die to live for their lives. That seems like a pretty complex sentence, but it's more a theological sentence that can be applied to our lives 
than maybe anything you've heard about Psalm 23. Jesus is a great shepherd. Now, this is really important, and you're probably asking why. Well, think of the other two passages. Let's go, first of all, to the first Peter passage. Think of the S words there. We talk about being servants. We talk about being subjects to our government. We talk about being in submission to the sovereign God. We talk about sovereignty. He knows things that we don't know. You ever stop to think he's already lived in tomorrow? So you don't have to worry about it? The word suffering is used in that passage. The word straying is used. Why? Because our souls are at risk. What's Peter saying? Peter, being the pastor of the Church of Jerusalem, has already experienced how difficult it is to be a believer in an unbelieving culture. Small persecutions have already begun in the Jewish community and greater persecutions would be had under the Romans. So Peter, the great pastor, the great shepherd, was saying to his people, the sheep, look, you're going to endure all of this kind of stuff. Let me give you some pastoral advice. And what about the Acts passage? Well, here are some S words from there. There were seven who were called aside to serve. We actually take their name, deacons, from table waiters. That's what it means. And then there's Stephen, who talked to his compatriots, the Jews, about being stiff-necked. So they stoned him. And whose name appears in the last sentence? Saul, who later becomes Paul, who becomes the itinerant shepherd, the missioner that travels all over the place. So while Peter stays in Jerusalem and it's the come model church, Paul is the shepherd who goes out in the go model church. Shepherds doing different things. Not all shepherds are the same. You've probably noticed that, especially now that we're in the middle of a transition here at our church. Pastor Bill is not the same as Pastor Keith. Pastor Keith is not the same as Pastor Bill. And everybody said, yes! <laughs> we weren't meant to be clones of each other. We were meant to be shepherds the way that God called us with all the gifts and talents that we have. And there is a succession that takes place, especially in local areas where churches hopefully, thankfully, get what they need because the sovereign God knows what the next person should be like. He knows what the challenges are up ahead. He knows what the office of the shepherd should really be. Now think about it. All those S words, did you memorize them? Would you choose at the very bottom controversial S words for a thousand, Alex? Why controversial? Let me remind you. Yeah, the shepherd, that's a beautiful story. The sheep, not so much. That's when it gets controversial. But are you willing to accept the wisdom of Scripture for you today? Because it's honest and tells you who he is and who you are and what that beautiful connection is. So you're probably looking at this and saying, why in the world is that up there? Let me tell you a story to finish. Anybody read Italian? Yeah, a few of you do. Okay. Not long after I met Rose, I had the opportunity to stay at their home over the weekend. We were college students. This is the way I remember the story. Every decent Italian home has at least 
three kitchens. <laughs> there's a, a work kitchen, and there's a preparation kitchen, and there's this kitchen that's upstairs on the main floor. Whoops, I hit that too fast. And, and mama works in all the kitchens, and usually all the kids work in the kitchens. And one Saturday when I was walking through the house, I heard, mm -hmm. And as I walked down the hall, I heard that melody singing. And then I heard these words. And I'm thinking, I don't speak Italian yet. I have no idea what's being sung. And as I walked downstairs and the closer I got, I heard Mama singing these words. Who was Mama? Caterina Chiravolotti. Why was she singing? Because she was practicing, because she taught Sunday school for about a thousand years. To a thousand kids or more. She was practicing because this was a song that she was going to sing with the kids. And as I walked downstairs, I was joined by another voice just behind me. The voice of that sweet lady that I married. And she was singing. And I turned around and I said, what does that mean? You probably figured it out. I am a little lamb. On you stay, lamb of God. And the Alino, Jesu. You can figure that one out, right? Jesus is my shepherd, but it says pastor. I'm just a little lamb. Son povero bambino. Salvato del Signor. Saved by God. There are actually three verses. What happened to the slides? I think Chaz got to the slides. <laughs> Um, I, I actually know that Chaz got to the slides. Um, so just pay attention up here while we fix it. What happened? Well, I heard that song and I never forgot it. Why? Because it told me this. The Great Shepherd cares for me. And the Great Shepherd cares for you. And if you're here this morning and you don't know that, that's basic to your faith. And that's why the Shepherd's story is told in John's Gospel. And that's why David, as a shepherd boy out on the fields, thought about what his responsibilities were and that's why Peter says, as the shepherd of the church at Jerusalem, guys, you're going to go through hard times. And why Luke writes, as a shepherd, in the book of Acts, and you may even die, but don't forget, the shepherd is always with you. Just say that with me one time. The great shepherd cares for you. Now change it to me. The great shepherd cares for you.